All right, recruits, if this is what the Emperor has given me, I guess I can work with it. So let's go ahead and grab our las guns and our paintbrushes, because today we're painting an Astra Militarum, or if you're a traditionalist like me, Imperial Guardsman. Let's get right to it. So after a quick priming of Gracier, our Astra Militarum infantryman is ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and get started using Apothecary White. And I plan on using this on all of the cloth portions of his armor. And normally I would not necessarily start with lighter color tones like this, but because the cloth portion is actually the most recessed, areas of this miniature, I wanted to make sure to get it done first so that I wasn't having to go back and touch it up too much when I start applying darker colors later. This way it's all done and I don't have to worry about it as much. And in a similar fashion, we're going to go ahead and take care of all of the leather straps on the armor as well using Black Templar. We're going to apply this to a lot of portions on his backpack and also the cords and leather on all of his uniform. This will give us a nice contrast between the white cloth that we've done and also work with what I plan on doing with his armor, the actual metal pieces later on. I got a little bit of paint in places that I didn't want it, so I went ahead and grabbed my Gracier and did a little bit of cleanup just to make sure that I have everything ready and prepped for our next stages. My tidy up stage is finished and he is looking handsome. So now it's time to move on and start working on all of that glorious armor that he's wearing. So we're going to grab our Canoptic Alloy and apply this to all of the armor pieces with the exception of his fingertips on his power fist. One thing that I do think would have helped me with doing this metallic stage and a few metallic stages later on is if I had primed his armor in a darker color tone, probably black, as I know that would have helped the metallics pop and I probably wouldn't have had to layer the paint quite as much as I end up needing to. But ultimately, I still think that we get a really nice effect and I really like my finish. Now it's time for us to move on to a bit of an armor shade. So we're gonna grab our Cryptek armor shade and apply this to all of those pieces that we just did. This is going to give us a nice little tint. It'll settle into the recesses and give us something to work with when we move on to the trim on the armor later on. Before finishing up the rest of his armor, I wanted to go ahead and finish with all of the rest of the contrast paints that I was going to be using on this mini. So we're going to grab our Basilicanum Gray and apply this to his boots, the bedroll, as well as his plasma gun. Next, we're going to grab Blood Angel's Red and apply this to the tip of the plasma gun. It took me a little while to get my hands on it, but I finally got a hold of some Tesseract Glow and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to try it out. So we're gonna apply it to the plasma portion of the plasma gun to give it a really nice glow effect. And honestly, it works super well. I definitely recommend this color, it's fantastic. Angela, what, what is all this? 
Um, I, I might have a problem. I have too many minis to paint and not enough subscribers to encourage me to do it. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the videos. I wanted to unify the panel on his arm with the gun, so I went ahead and grabbed Orc Flesh Green and applied that to the Auspex panel on his arm. I specifically chose this particular build of this mini because I wanted as little flesh as possible considering my last week's mini, and I really wanted to focus on the armor. So we're just gonna take a bit of Gilliman's flesh and apply it to that single hand that he has exposed and that is unarmored. Now it's time to really start making that power fist pop. So we're gonna take some Gehenna's gold and apply this to the fingertips as well as the pistons that you can see on the front panel of the power fist. Ultimately, I really like the effect I get with the bright rose gold of Gehenna's gold mixed with the sort of rose brass tone that I'm getting from the layers that I've put onto the armor, and I think it ultimately works out great. But we're gonna enhance both the fist as well as his exposed hand with a little bit of Reichlin flesh shade just to give a little bit of pop and add some depth. All right, it's time now to talk about the gun and what I did to the tip of it. Ultimately, I didn't like it. What I was trying to do was I wanted to go for a glow effect as if the gun was firing and it just didn't work. Also, I decided I wanted to drill out the barrel of the gun because it just felt appropriate. So we went ahead and we did that. And then we're going to touch up that bit of green with some primer, just putting a little bit of gray sear back on there. And then finally, we're gonna just cover it with Blood Angels Red and make it unified with the rest of the tip of the gun. And I just ultimately think it works better. Maybe in the future, I'll be able to figure out something to be able to do a better glow effect to make it look like the gun is being fired. But for right now, it didn't quite work. So we're just going to fix that and move on. But now it's time to actually finish up all of that lovely armor. And this is the portion where if I had primed at least the trim in black, I think it would have saved me a lot of time because the silver, the Stormhost silver that I use on this is very pale, very thin, and I ended up having to layer and spend a lot of time working and going over this trim to get the effect that I really wanted. And ultimately I get there, but I feel like it would have been just a lot faster if I had primed a darker color beneath it first. So if you're doing this yourself, I would definitely recommend it. It's definitely something I'm doing in the future. As I was working on the mini, there was a couple of things happening on the backpack that I wasn't super happy with. I didn't think I was getting enough depth on it. So I went ahead and cleaned up a few places, specifically those leather bags that I had sort of missed were leather bags, cleaned those up, primed them in gray sear, and then applied a single layer of snake bite leather to them just to give us a little bit more of a dynamic effect. The one other bit on the backpack that I decided to update, I chose to put some Militarum green on the ammo casing that is at the bottom of the backpack. Again, the green color just sort of ties in those other green tones that we've already used. And this just adds some further detail to that backpack to help pop it. The final thing that we need to do for our guardsman is take a little bit of spirit stone red and apply this to not only his eyes, but also those lenses that are on his helmet as well as his backpack. This just gives it a nice little detail. You get this nice little gem effect and I think it works really, really nicely. And it ties into the tip of the plasma gun, which I very much enjoy. All right, my boy is done and now it's time to get his base prep form. So we're gonna take a bit of Sterling mud and just apply this thinly over top the entire thing. 
Something that I decided to do while the base was drying is I decided to attach him with it still partially wet, gluing the miniature down. That way his foot sort of recessed into the mud a little bit more naturally because this is going to emphasize something that I'm gonna do in a bit to finish the mini up. But first we're going to apply a small dry brush of Steel Legion Drab over top the entire Sterling Mud base, just to give us a little bit of color differentiation and pop some details there. And then finally, doing something that I don't normally do, I went ahead and took a bit of foam from the cases that I used to carry my armies and Sterling Mud and applied this to the base of the miniature and up a little bit onto his feet and legs to give him a, an effect that he's walked through this mud and is kind of tracking it around. And I think the effect works really well. I had a lot of fun doing this. It's probably something I'll try a bit more in the future and I definitely suggest it. And that's the litany of unjamming. Oh. Hello there. Isn't my Imperial Guardsman fantastic? I'm very, very pleased with how this guy came out. I don't often work in a lot of metallics, so this was a bit of a challenge for me, and I've definitely learned a lot about metallic paints while doing this, but ultimately I'm very pleased with how he came out. I wanted to do something that was different from what I normally do, which is a lot of bright and saturated colors. And I think I accomplished that. I didn't want to go full like gritty grim dark, but I wanted to do something that was a little bit more natural feeling and a little bit more subtle. And I think I accomplished that super well with this Tempestist. And I just, honestly, he was a lot of fun and I can't wait to paint up a few more of these guys and have a little squad of five guys to be able to run maybe a kill team game with. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. What would you do differently? And I will see you guys next week for another news video as well as another new painting video.